Welcome back to the Gosseth Handyman Tip Library. Today I'm going to give you a cheap source of square edged strip wood mouldings. Hiya, welcome back. I hope you're having a wonderful Saturday morning so far. If you are watching it on the Saturday morning when it came out, or it might be the afternoon, or it might not even be a Saturday, or it might be the evening, or it might be good night. So it's been another kind of crazy couple of weeks, or a week. Seems like a couple of weeks, but it's only a week since I've done the last video, I think. Has it been? I'm not sure. I've still got bigger videos that I need to get finished off and released, but I just haven't had time to finish them. But the, I've got a, a few that are ready to kind of go, but I just need to do some last minute tweaks on them and stuff. I was using my compressor the other day and it started to smell a bit funny. And then I kind of remembered that I've never changed the oil in it or even checked how much oil is in it because I, I don't know how to do that because I haven't got a manual for it and it's really old and I've looked everywhere and can't find a spec sheet for it or anything about it. I should probably buy a new compressor. So I drained it, hardly any oil came out and uh, it's a wonder the poor thing's been working at all to be honest. So as I say, I don't have a spec sheet for it. It's like an Airmaster EPM9 or something like that. I don't even know what size the tank is. How big is the tank? Dunno, like that. So I got a, a litre of the SAE30 oil and I thought, well, that should do. So I poured that in and it didn't seem to overflow or anything and it didn't, there's no level or anything. How do you know how much oil to put in it? So I poured the litre in and put the cap back on, switched it on and it started peeing oil everywhere. Literally oil was just gushing out of it while it was running. And it was basically squirting the oil straight into the belt, which isn't great. About 200 mils of oil came back out of it. I reckon one of these compressors needs about 800 mil of oil and not one liter. There you go, who knew? If you've got an Airmaster EPM 9 or 9 EPM, I'm gonna check. So there you go, if you've got an Airmaster 9 EPA, it needs about 800 mil of oil, I think. Seems to be happy enough now. It's um, no more oils coming out of it and it doesn't smell funny anymore and it seems to be working perfect. And Lord only knows how it was working at all with what it had in it. It can't have had more than 200 mils in. Anyway, the, the other thing I've been doing as well, which I mentioned in one of the past videos was I was thinking of switching out the blade in my evolution miter saw for a finer tooth count blade to see if that helps things at all because I've been having a few problems with the quality of the cut I've been getting from it. So what I thought I would try is to put the blade out of my table saw, the 60 tooth blade out of that into the miter saw and see, just to try it really, just to see if it works and to see if it's any better. It's a bit of a pain in the neck because the bore size is different. So I had to use some bore adapters to bring the size down to the one inch. I think it's a one inch arbor on the Evolution, whereas the Freud blade on the table saw is 30 mil. Is it one inch? So this is the old blade and it's, yeah, one inch arbor, 25.4 mil, as opposed to 30 mil, which was on the other blade. So as I say, I just had to use some reducer rings, which I'm never that keen on. So I've taken this one off and it is fairly blunt. Like, don't get us wrong, I wouldn't want to put my fingers in its path but I'm not particularly surprised that I wasn't getting a particularly clean cut. And it's not that old, but it has cut a bit of metal, but not much metal. I don't, I don't tend to use metal very much in the shop. So anyway, so I've put the Freud blade onto the miter saw just to see if it works. And it seems to work great so far. Watch this space. It may come flying off and just, you know, but it seems to be working okay so far. Um, to be honest, I don't think there's any fear of the blade coming off by itself because it was a pain in the backside getting the blade on in the first place. But it's on now and the cut is way, way better than it was before. So I think I'm going to leave that on there for a little while because I'm quite happy with that. So that means I now need another new blade for my table saw since I've stolen the blade out of it. And uh, if you watched my blade upgrade video a couple of months back, you will have seen that it's a 60 tooth blade that I put on the table saw. And that's been working absolutely brilliantly, no problems with it whatsoever. 
But a few people in the comments said that I'd bought the wrong blade and that that's not the blade that I wanted, even though I'm pretty sure it is the blade I wanted. I cut a lot of MDF and plywood and stuff that needs a high tooth count blade, which is why I went for the 60 tooth. But a few people said I would get better results with the dedicated rip blade. And I do, you know, I do use it for rip cuts. Obviously I use it for all sorts, but I need something that's gonna work as well for rips as it does for cross cuts or the other way around, especially cutting ply. You know, if you're ripping ply or whatever, I need it to be able to handle the wood no matter what way the grain direction's running. And the 60 tooth blade works brilliantly for that. In fact, here's an example of the sort of quality that you get on the cut of ply going both with the grain and have I got a bit that's across? Maybe I didn't do that one cross. Try and find a piece where I've gone across the grain. Hold on. There you go, that's the quality of the cut that I'm getting across the grain. So you can see it's it's perfect. There's literally zero tear out at all. That's what I need from a blade. So a few people said that the 40 tooth Freud rip cut blade would give me better results. So I thought, well, okay, I'll give it a try. So I've bought that and I've put it on the saw and I've tried it and I can categorically say it does not give as good a results as the 60 tooth one I had on. It's good, way better than the stock DeWalt blade, which is understandable, but it's not as good as the 60. Jury's out at the minute. I'm gonna use it for a bit. It's fine, but I do think I prefer the 60 tooth one that is currently on my miter saw. We'll see what happens there. And I shall report back. What else has been happening? Um, oh yeah, as part of the, you know, I've been doing this router table thing, which still isn't finished. I had to tidy up my strip wood stock to try and make some room for the benchtop router table and stuff. So I've been tidying up all that because it was in such a mess that it was easier to just go to B&Q and buy more wood than it was to try and sort through what I had. So my strip wood was just in an absolute mess, but it's all tidied up now and much, much better. And as part of that, I thought I would do a very quick tip video about where to get cheap square edged. Where's my piece of wood? Where's it gone? It was here two seconds ago. Where to get cheap square edged strip wood from. So that's it. It's not gonna focus on that because I'm on manual focus, but it's um, eight or nine millimeter pine, really handy for fascias on the front of floating shelves, on all sorts of stuff. It's, it's just really handy stuff to have. But if you go down to your local big DIY store, and to be honest, there's not many places around here other than the big stores that even sell this sort of stuff. So if you go down there and buy strip wood straight off the shelf, you're looking at about five pounds, five pounds per strip for a little bit of wood. So I'm gonna tell you a little tip if you use this stuff, how to get it way, way cheaper. So if you use strip wood like that for your projects, just buy some interior softwood cladding. And this is eight mil by 94, 2.4 meter lengths, comes in packs of five, dead cheap, and just rip it to the whatever size you want. So I'll start by ripping the tongue and groove strips off first. Keep these because they're really handy for small detailed trim work. And then I rip 45 mil strips and then that leaves me with 34 mil strips I think left over. So one pack gives me five 45 mil strips, five 34 mil strips and 15 of the little detail strips as well. And to buy all that by the length would be at least 50 quid. But this whole pack of five lengths of cladding was only I think five quid or seven quid or something like that. These little beads they're so handy for loads of different things. I'm just sorting them out here into kind of ones that are, are they're not good enough to keep and then I'm sorting them out into kind of short ones, medium sized ones and long ones. They're so handy you can make little detail mouldings out of them and all sorts of things. I might do a tip video on that at some point on uh, what you can use these sort of little strip mouldings for, but they are really the handy to have around, even as just little chims and packers for, for stuff there. They're handy to have, because you never know when you might need a spacer for something. 
and uh, and you've got these to hand. Some of them are like, you know, they break off obviously at knots and stuff and then, you know, that's, they're not worth keeping. But uh, the vast majority of them are, are perfectly usable, so that'll do the job. That's not worth, get rid of that. So there you go. Sorry, they're not 34 mil, they're about 20, 8 mil I think. I've lost my ruler. Yeah, 28 mil from this batch. So I've got 45s, 28s, and then I've got all the little uh, detail strips as well. All, all of that wood for about a fiver. Bargain, I am the tightest man in the world, mind. So there you go, I hope that's vaguely useful for you. Have a fantastic weekend, and uh, I shall see you, I've got, as I say, a couple more videos that are, are in the edit, they're imminent. If I can just get the last little bits of it finished off, they'll be out quite soon. In fact, YouTube keeps telling us to put videos out on a Sunday night, um, because apparently that's the best time for me, but I'll never have a video ready by then, and I always have best intentions to get a video out on a Sunday night and then by the time I have it done it's a Wednesday or something and Wednesday is probably the worst day possible for releasing a video because it's when my viewing stats are lower than any other day so it's a really bad day to put a video out but it's just one of them things. Anyway, bye!